the Palace Verdes Art Centre, I'm sorry, the new Palace Verdes Art Centre, and we're going to talk to Mr. Joe Baker. And Joe, if you would tell us what your title is. Uh, good morning, John. I'm Joe Baker, Executive Director of Palace Verdes Art Centre. I guess the first question is, uh, you must be pretty excited to have this uh, new facility. Just tell me briefly a little bit about it. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, and I, I hope that the uh, community is as excited as I am about the new space. Um, I, I invite everyone to think of the Palace Verdes uh, Art Center as a reimagined space that is very much uh, suited to our mission, which is to uh, create, appreciate, and celebrate the arts. How important, uh, you mentioned the word mission, how important in setting up something like this is a mission, and perhaps you could explain to our audience a little bit more about how, and I guess from talking to you, you're very excited about your mission. Well, I think, um, you know, our, our mission is to uh, create art uh, for people of all ages, to create that platform, that stage, for interaction and uh, education and learning. Um, all based and centered around the arts and its various configurations. And the Palos Verdes Art Center has a long history of uh, service in the arts to this community. When you say a long service, uh, we go back to when? Let's go back to the founding, and, and I think we're well positioned here. Uh, if we just reference this painting, which is in the uh, current exhibition, Then and Now, it's from 1931. 1931? 1931, and it was the first purchase prize for the Palace Verdes Art Center. And there's a wonderful uh, descriptive uh, text that. label that shows the painting uh, used in an educational studio discussion with students. How difficult, when you think about the word mission, how difficult, or easy, I guess, is it to find new artists, um, or do you go with sort of well-established ones? How does, how does that fit into the mission part of your work? Well, I think, uh, I think we uh, in, open our doors to artists at all levels. Um, the uh, traditional, historic, uh, I mean, we have our own art histories, we have our own uh, community artists, which we want to celebrate, uh, but we also have uh, new artists who are bringing new thought and energy into the narrative. How long typically does each, what do you call them, an exhibit, a showing? I mean, does it last a couple of weeks, a couple of months? How about that? Well, in this new reimagined facility, we have actually five exhibition uh, spaces. So we have the flexibility of, of mounting large-scale, long-running uh, long exhibitions. Or we also have the possibility of bringing to the galleries uh, short feature exhibits that might parallel and complement one of our workshops or one of our offerings. That's interesting you say workshops. Um, for people watching, what exactly is a workshop? Who does it uh, entail? What does it entail? And how can people locally get involved in that? Well, it's very easy. Just give us a call. We're, we're happy to give you all the information. Uh, you can uh, register online. We have a, uh, also a printed uh, catalog of our course offerings uh, per semester or per uh, quarter. Uh, one workshop that is upcoming, which I'm thrilled to announce and, and uh, share with you today, is a fashion design workshop. A fashion design <laughs> Well, That's interesting. <laughs> with um, uh, uh, Gerard uh, uh, Gislan, who is uh, a French designer. He was vice president of operations for Juicy Couture. And it's an offering for um, our teenage population, uh, 14 to 17 years of age. It's really a, a, a thrilling two-week workshop whereby uh, the students who participate in the workshop come to the center, uh, Gerard brings uh, vintage clothes. Uh, they go through that collection. They um, take those clothes. Uh, they deconstruct the garments and then reconstruct them in a contemporary fashion. And it ends with a, a final runway show. 
I'm intrigued by the fact that you say young people, 18, 19. How important uh, is it to involve young people? I think it's t tremendously important because? that we, because we need to engage uh, 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 those younger audiences because they're the future uh, supporters and patrons of the arts. They contribute to our society. Uh, they bring uh, a new, fresh perspective uh, to every day. And so, you know, the youth uh, uh, need, you know, we need to embrace the youth. What are some of the big changes that you see in what we have now to what you didn't have before here in the Arts Center? We, we have now, in my opinion, a stage, uh, a stage for the community, uh, a stage for uh, uh, cross, uh, across generations. Uh, we have a stage to serve new audiences in new and engaged ways, uh, whether it's uh, a studio class or a, a lecture or um, a celebration of the arts, which could be uh, multidisciplinary, um, we have a reason, a compelling reason, to uh, visit the new center and uh, share the day with others. We also, and quickly let me mention, uh, a new glass blowing facility. We have a wonderful viewing mezzanine. We envision that this gla uh, glass studio will, will bring master glass artists uh, to Palos Verde Center for demonstrations and classes. I don't imagine art centers with glass blowing, but is I mean that must be pretty exciting for you. It's very exciting and actually very unique. Right. Uh, we believe that we are the only uh, facility outside the high school, and both our high school programs here offer glass blowing, which is very very rare. But but our facility here, we believe, is you know the only one within this uh, immediate region. And it is of such a level, a, tech, a technical level, that we can offer some incredible experiences in the studio. If we're in what used to be the Borders bookstore in the mall here in PV, and, and since so many people remember this as a bookstore, what exactly is it now? Well, right now it's an art center. And uh, our main part as you walk in is the main galleries for the uh, Palos Verdes Art Center. And we are right now in, I think was the cafe at the bookstore, but we call it the multi-purpose room. The multi-purpose room, <laughs> <laughs> okay, multi-purpose. <laughs> Tell me some of what the purposes are. Well, we have an exhibition going up right now of student work. Uh, so we use this as an exhibition space and then also they have birthday parties on this side and then we have our receptions on this side. They have birthday parties here? I can't <laughs> believe it. Birthday parties for little kids. They do, uh, if you look in one of the rooms you'll see each chair has little wings on it. So they do a little fairyland kind of thing or some kind of theme birthday party. So, and then they have workshops in here for the birthday party. I see you have like a coffee bar over there? Yes. But that's for students. That's for students. Yeah, we don't sell coffee or okay. do anything commercially. <laughs> yeah. Starbucks is right down the street. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it's wonderful that you're doing stuff for young people today. Um, when I talk about young people, what exactly does young people encompass from age what to what? Oh, I think it's from uh, early uh, preschool all the way to high school age. From preschool? Yeah. I think they have preschool classes here. Uh, I'm not sure, but. Uh, Young, well, let's start with young kids all the way to high school. Knowing how important it is for young people who are creative, and I come from a creative background myself, to get into things, it's always difficult to get that first break. So without putting words into your mouth, this gives young people a real chance and opportunity to get started. Sure, sure. In fact, this project that we're kind of witnessing right here as we're going on, this is an internship class that was started this semester. The idea was we brought in high school students to teach them what it's like to be a curator. So there were various speakers at the class. I was one of the speakers. There was an educator that spoke. There was a PR person who spoke. And the idea is to tell, uh, explain to the students what a curator does. How does an artist get an exhibition? So the charge was they took an exhibition that I had kind of already planned. It was a landscape painting show. And at the new art center, we have a plein air painting show by the California Art Club. Well, here I wanted to have a student show. So what better way to have the students curate students? 
I think it would be of interest to our viewers to know a little bit more about the painting that uh, inspired you. Could you tell us a little bit about the artist and is it a man or a woman that did that? Just give us a little background. Or, well, I met the artist in my architecture class. And we, there's a couple of us who have nicknames. And I, and I heard them, they call him the artist. And I was like, an artist? So you're an artist? I confronted him and I asked him, so you're an artist? And he's like, yeah, I, I paint. And, and um, he showed me some of his paintings and I saw them. And I was like, whoa. And at the meantime, I was doing this intern thing. And I was like, you have to come with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I t explained it to him and he was like, he was very positive about it and he said he agreed to it. And so he became the artist Alma Show, which his name is Sean Hall. This is obviously a jazz icon. Does he focus in on, on jazz figures? Um, he, he told me that he focused on jazz right now because um, his father is in a jazz band and he was putting on a show and he asked his son if he could put on some paintings for him. So he got him the stuff and he came out of, with this and his dad, he told me his dad was very um, blown away. He didn't expect this. What sort of importance do you think there is to having someone like you ask someone who does this sort of work to, uh, to helping you? Um, the important thing is, as you can see, we do different types of paintings. Right, that's exactly what I meant. And the important thing for me is, even though they're different types of mediums, different types of styles, we could still learn from each other. Like, I could teach him different things, way he could put things in, and he could teach me ways where I could use colors in a different manner. In my years of doing television and radio, I've never done a show about a room that is completely bereft of everything, and so this is going to be a really interesting uh, conversation. Doug, first of all, tell our viewers uh, what your profession is and all that good stuff. Uh, we actually came here to Palos Verdes because of the director, Joe Baker, who uh, we just finished having um, a retrospective of 30 years of our work at the Longview House and Gardens in New Orleans. And, we met Joe Baker there, and uh, we sort of fell in love with him, and he brought us over here to work on um, sort of changing and designing the office spaces and other things at the center, um, actually before they open in June. Well, the interesting thing is because this is an art center, it's, 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 it's a gallery space, it's an art center, it's sort of a hub and happening for the community. And we wanted to make this really into a real workspace as opposed to some- A real workspace? Well, a real work, well, it's not right now. It's, it's, it's actually a, a, an art studio. Of course, the center hasn't opened yet, but we're, we're changing, we're moving things around as far as placement of things. So this is now going to be the offices for the staff. And off, off of there is also the uh, director's office as well as the, the, the printing um, area. Um, but we really wanted to make it, as I said, into a real office. But when I say real office, I mean I don't mean a corporate office. I don't want it to be a corporate environment. It needs to be an area where, where they interact with one another. They're all working together on, on various projects. And they, they need to think out of the box in a different way. Um, I've, been for the last uh, few days at the uh, temporary offices that they've had for the last two years, and they're, they're all in cubicles. And they need to get out of those cubicles, and they need to get into a whole new environment and, and start thinking in a whole new way. And what we're going to be doing and creating in the center here is this huge communal work table, not where they're necessarily going to be they're stationed at. They're actually going to be, there'll be six staff members in this room. Each one will have There'll, there'll be three on each side. They won't be in cubicles. They'll have their own little world, but they'll be able to communicate and work with each other. And the environment itself, we're still formulating that right now, but we want it a little more raw, a little more, not industrial, but a, a little more quirky and odd. How important is creativity in designing an office? Um, yeah, how important is that? Well, I, 
I mean, that's everything. I mean, when you're designing anything, it's all about, it's about the creativity that you've accumulated in your entire life, the knowledge that you have, the, the folders of files that you have in your brain that you reference from your years of experience of, 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 of learning and, and, and creating and, and designing. And, and you know, it, it, it's, it, the creative process is a hard thing to explain to someone. It, it, it's just... You either see it or you don't. Yeah, I, I, on a lot of levels. Uh, so it, it, as far as that goes, I, I really, you know, we're, we're still, we've been spending the last three days meeting with, with um, everyone from the staff individually and, and collectively, and we've just been hashing out and going through and brainstorming. Uh, we've probably, on other areas that we're working on, in addition to this, we've probably changed things at least eight times. It, it's got, we've, got to, we've got to make it work for everybody. Thinking that this, or not thinking, but knowing that this is in an arts center, um, the creativity aspect and the artistic aspect, I assume, is very important as opposed to just an office office. Which is the main reason why we don't want them in cubicles, why we want them thinking in a different way too. And they were actually all very excited about the idea of, of, of not being in these sort of scary cubicles. I think they've been carrying these cubicles around for the last 10 or 15 years, so they're not so pretty. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's getting them, and they were, you know, working out on a huge communi communal table where, where, where two, three, or four people on a team can actually just interact and, and throw ideas out. I'm a huge proponent of when you're, when you're doing something is to have an enormous table and space to spread out on and throw things out, whether they're files or drawings or ideas or whatever, because that way, if you don't put them on the wall, you don't put them on the table, and you're just leaving them in a little stack, which is what, is, what a lot of people do, you, you, you don't really see the whole picture. And I think uh, very shortly we're going to have to come back here and take a look and see what this gentleman has created. Until next time, John Clayton.